Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, December the 7th. Going to take a look at the morning charts here this morning. We've got the US dollar index, and the blue line here is the SP 500 futures overlaying that. And more or less, what we're seeing here is uh, the US dollar is kind of just forming this kind of little bit of a flag here. It has it keeps fading down, and then we see a nice rally back up to the trend line. We see it fade back down, rallies back up to the upper trend line, faded down yesterday, and this morning is starting to. Uh, rally back up to that trend line. So as we've got this channeling price here. Overall, the trend is still up. This uh, this looks as though the U.S. dollar is trying to go higher, but overall, it, uh, it just continues to trade in this trend here and gets hit with uh, headline risk news each day. It seems like as soon as the dollar starts to get some strength, uh, we get some news out of Europe or something, and it actually steps on the dollar. But if you take a look at the SP 500 behind here you can see it is actually kind of channeling up also and it's actually a very bearish pattern for uh, stocks and usually that actually plays out to the downside and uh, there's quite a bit of room for the S&P to fall if if we get this uh, kind of outcome now just taking a look at the chart we've seen uh, the SP or sorry the US dollar index drifted lower through the night uh, a little bit and now we're getting a little bit of a bounce so we'll just see what uh, this morning's bounce in the US dollar how it's affecting stocks and commodities so here's the crude oil chart four hour chart of crude oil you can see the past couple hours uh, this is a four hour chart so each candle is uh, four hours so that bounce in the US dollar index has pulled crude oil down a little bit overall crude oil is starting to look pretty toppy we've got, we've got this uh, this top up here and it's been working its way there. We've got this kind of we had this rising wedge up into a resistance zone and then we had some strong selling a couple days ago and we're seeing it actually trade up underneath this support trend line looks as though it might start to actually break down today and we'll see if that happens. Uh, I'd like to see the US dollar break out and uh, we might we may end up looking to take a, a short position on crude oil. There's good potential for it to fall from where it is to the 96 level um, we'll kind of play that one by year. It's kind of tough going into uh, Thursday, Friday with uh, the news for uh, Europe and stuff unfolding. So there's going to be some pretty crazy price action, I would think, in the second half of this week. And it will add a ton of risk because who knows what's going to happen. Everybody's kind of uh, kind of got their arms up in the air. Nobody knows if there's going to be a good resolution or resolution at all. Uh, if the euro is going to be saved so it's uh, a real wild card and anything could happen you could see prices spike crude oil uh, currencies stocks uh, gold everything could go haywire in a blink of an eye and uh, it does carry a ton of risk trying to get into a trade just before some of this news so I'm not sure we want to get too involved if you do it better be a very small position because you have no control uh, of what's going to happen uh, once that news hits the wires and it's going to be fast so if you are in a position make sure you've got a hard stop in place meaning that uh, if that price gets uh, triggered you just get out you don't need a limit order it doesn't need to hit that exact price it's just as soon as it goes uh, to the through your stop price or beyond it just automatically takes you out of the trade now taking a look at gold and silver gold and silver uh, pulling back in the last uh, in the last four hours here as the US dollars moved up just kind of hooking down a bit we did see uh, gold come down to that support zone and pouring it out yesterday morning got a little bit of a bounce there and uh, this morning is just kind of pulling back just a hair nothing really drastic in either gold or silver silver continues to just trade sideways here and work off some time from this big drop that it had uh, uh, back in September looking at bonds Here's the four hour chart of bonds. You can see we had that run right up to uh, the previous highs here. It started to fade back down as money as money has been coming out of bonds and going into stocks. That's one of, one of the reasons why we've seen some uh, uh, such a strong move up in equities. Money's been coming out of the safe play and going into the risk on the, the equities where people want to try and make more money. Right now, bonds is trading at a very uh, critical support zone. Just looking across here, more or less, you've got a key pivot uh, area where you've got uh, major support, became resistance all across here, and then it came, uh, became support again across here. So we are trading at a pretty good uh, uh, 
support zone. Wouldn't be surprised if we see bonds come back up and test probably these, these possible highs here. And um, again, if we see bond prices move up, we're probably going to see equities move down because money will flow out of equities and back into bonds, which is the safe haven during uh, a down market. Now, taking a, a long-term chart of the SP500, this is the SP500. I, I, it's a daily chart, but I, I zoomed out really far. We're going back uh, pretty much 10 years, and this is the 200-day moving average. You can see how it's just kind of played the major trends, and it kind of shows you where we stand. And really, the, the key point where we are right now is, you know, are we here or are we at something, um, you know, similar to something similar to more like down here where we're just kind of trying to eat through this resistance level and eventually start another major run to the uh, upside with uh, a possible target of hitting the all-time high uh, of the S&P back in 2007 because that's what more or less the next thrust would, would pretty much take us uh, almost up there. So that's kind of where we stand right now and really right now the charts look as though they actually want to head lower and uh, if, if they do, we could see the SP500 eventually just uh, give way here, and eventually it'll have its pauses, and you know it could go sharply lower. Now that's a very very bearish outlook. And of course, this is the 08, 09 lows, and you can see um, if we have this type of sell-off starting to go over here, we are going to see some pretty crazy selling, probably like we saw uh, back in 2008 don't know if it would be quite that extreme but I know people are, after this uh, this big drop here are not willing to hold on to stocks if the stock market rolls over so you know it, it'll be a different type of selling but I know there's going to be a lot of people piling out of the market uh, because they don't want to hold for another major pullback now on the flip side of things if we see tons of printing come into place and the euro and the dollar, everybody just starts printing. We're overall going to see uh, probably equities move uh, substantially higher, probably right up somewhere into this level here, which will be key resistance. And uh, we should see a breakout uh, in the next month or so, or possibly even this week, depending how the market plays out with this news on Thursday, Friday. And um, and we'll just kind of take it one kind of play at a time right now it's we're at a pretty major tipping point if I just zoom into this chart you can see how we are trading right at the 200 day we've had some some strong surges of buying and selling going on this is the buying and selling ratios and uh, we've had this big you know run right up to that level so the question is are we going to get a pullback uh, possibly sell back sell off even further or are we going to see the market finally break through it and then start to extend It'll probably have some type of pause as it tries to eat through this previous high but the question is um, what is it going to do at this point here are we going to get a pullback or a rally and right now we're actually positioned for a pullback in the market but um, we'll have to see how things kind of unfold and we just kind of do it play by play here so taking a quick look at the more the shorter term chart of the SP500 here we've got uh, just to show you kind of a, a regular topping pattern we've kind of got this broadening formation uh, coming in here we've got a pretty key support trend line which is yet to really be pierced once we see that broken we could see a very sharp drop as there will be several pivot lows here uh, as these prices get um, triggered you're going to see stop orders come into place and uh, you know the market will pick up speed and more or less go straight down and eventually come in and fill this gap if we do get that final wave of selling to trigger all this now this broadening formation very similar to kind of what we had over here you get this broadening formation eventually it gets extremely choppy you get these exhaustion gaps which I was hoping we had that exhaustion gap um, over here there's a big gap up to the upside and uh, and then it started to sell down and uh, overall futures trading moved up a little bit more last night but uh, I do feel as though we're at the edge, the, the verge of a very sharp pullback, and we're riding this nice trend line up. Um, the nice thing about a trend line like this is that once it breaks, usually you see lots of selling kick in. So here we've got a pretty major support trend line and lots of nice clean pivot lows. So eventually, 
if the SP 500 doesn't break to the upside and run on huge volume on strong news on Thursday Friday uh, one, if this support level gets broken we're gonna see prices start to crash and and fall very sharply which is what we're in position for this kind of riding support trend line will make for a great opportunity for a nice strong downdraft at least to this uh, more or less top of this gap window here which a gap window is the gap that it had earlier last week anyways uh, I'll just show you the futures chart of what's kind of unfolded in overnight trading here's the SP 500 and uh, looking at the charts we had uh, the SP 500 end up closing right around here yesterday we had that strong run up into the close uh, some headline news and then uh, it turned around and sold right back down and this is one of the things with news you gotta be very careful about you get a you get a huge move straight up usually whatever goes straight up comes straight back down and it did with some very strong volume into the close overnight trading we've seen the market kind of move up here made a new high broke yesterday's high broke the previous uh, sessions high but uh, it has then since then pulled back down this morning so we, we're still trading above this uh, morning's gap uh, yesterday's close so we're seeing the market gap up but you can see here just the volatility is is picking up pretty pretty dramatically and um, we're gonna have a, a major support you know trend line running across here that if this does get broken we're gonna see prices most likely uh, dump pretty quick anyways that's it for now and I'll talk to you in a little bit Bye-bye.